Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to make really simple and easy uh, image gallery using Adobe Anime CC. Also, we're going to do a little bit of the uh, action script. So let's get started. Okay, so first let me show you what we're going to have today. So test the movie, command return. Okay, so this is the um, uh, image gallery. There are really simple seven buttons and seven images, and you can jump to any image wherever you are by using simple uh, action script. So let's get started. Open new document, 640 by 480, default setting, and 24 frame rate and HTML5 canvas. So create it. Okay, so first, uh, please download the images I provided from the link I pro uh, on the bottom of this screen. Uh, there are the two images. One is a PSD file and another one is the PNG file. So let me import the first one uh, to stage directly. Once you import to stage, it will be pasted on your stage and also in your library as well. So import to stage. So first, Please uh, import this one, imagegallery.psd. This image has the multiple layers, so um, uh, I'm going to import it to my stage. And you can check your library, and you can see that, all images we have. Okay. So, and also the layer one, uh, which is empty for now, so you can get rid of it, just delete it. Okay, so to make it easier, the first thing we're going to do is uh, open your Properties panel. Uh, so click somewhere else of your stage. Uh, do not click on your image, so we can see the end. Just uh, Properties of this movie file. I'm going to change my frame rate just temporarily down to 10 FPS. Okay, now select all first keyframes of all your images, not the background one yet, and go to insert and create classic twin. So all seven images and classic twins applied, and then I insert the keyframe on frame number 10. Okay, now move your playhead back to first and select all first keyframes by holding down the shift key. Then, in the Properties panel, click on your image. So I'm selecting all seven now. And in your Properties panel, change the color effect and choose the alpha down to zero. So we have fading in effect. Okay. Now, bottom layer, bottom image, I will just leave it as it is. From the second one, uh, the concept of this image gallery is we're going to have all seven images in one timeline. It's a kind of a linear sequence. And we're going to jump back and forth in one timeline. So on image six, the bottom one, select the whole layer and grab your entire segment and move it down to the bottom layer, your very first image layer, and right next to it, like this. The third image, same way. Grab it, drag, and drop. And the next one, drag and drop. And the next one, drag and drop. And the next, drag and drop. And the next, drag and drop. Okay, so eventually, we're going to have this fade in, uh, in, fade in, fade in, fade in, fade in. Okay. Now, all other layers from 1 to 6, we don't need it anymore. So just dump it, delete it. And I'm going to rename this layer as images. This is kind of a quickest and easiest way. And then, also, I need to keep my background image layer, uh, uh, this image, from here till frame number 70. So go to insert menu, timeline, and frame so we can expand it from 1 to 70. So from the beginning 
till the end, we have the same background image. Okay, now I'm going to change my frame rate back to 24 so we can keep the same, uh, the correct, um, the smoother uh, animation sequence. Okay, now make a new layer on top. This layer will be named as a frame. Then go to insert, I mean the file, import, and we're going to import this time frame.png. This is a uh, transparent pink file with some shadow effect. Okay, and let me place my play head on frame number 10, where I have my 100% um, alpha value image, the first one, and then on just to place it right on top. Maybe here. Okay, so we have the Polaroid frames. So it's almost done. We just need to have a control. Okay, and right on top of this, we're going to have yeah, the kind of red button, the black button, the really simple images, the button images. So first, uh, I'm going to lock uh, these layers and make a new layer on top. And let me set my field uh, stroke color to nothing and field color to um, just black. And let me draw one simple dot about this size. Okay, select it. And we're going to define it as a button. So go to insert the menu and I'm sorry, modify and convert to symbol. Or you can use this, convert to symbol either way. Let me click on this button. It will be button, so our type is supposed to be button, and the name, I'm going to name it as a button. Okay. So now this is a button, but um, uh, we will need to uh, make some changes. So go to libraries, you see the button symbol, double click. Okay. So uh, up black. And when I roll over and click, I want to have a different color. So insert the keyframe first. And on your over frame, change your uh, field color to any color you like. I'm going to use the red, bright red. And then down and hit, I will keep the same. So just to insert the keyframe. So up frame, original color is black. When I roll over, red. When I press, same color. This is a hitting area. So let me go back. Okay. Now I'm going to make a few copies. So let me zoom in a little bit. Let me have, since we have seven images, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let me select all and open the alignment panel and let me keep the same distance in between each button and then still these seven buttons are selected and by using this free transform tool let me rotate it so i can keep the kind of a same angle on that polaroid polaroid photo frame so looks good looks okay yeah, maybe a little bit Okay, I'm happy. Okay, now open properties. Uh, in order to have some kind of a command, I mean kind of interactivity, we're going to use the really simple action script. So uh, to cooperate with the action script, each button symbol, in this case, each one is called the instance. Uh, so there are seven instances of a button symbol now. So each instance needs to have a name. So select the first one. Instance name in your properties panel. Let me name it as a button number one. Same way, button number two, BTN number two, BTN number three, BTN number four, not BTS. It's not funny. BTN number five. 
btn number six and btn number seven. So we have a seven buttons. So it is almost done. Let me test it. See what happens. Okay. So I'm um, now my buttons. It is working. Okay. And then, um, but um, the problem is my um, the seven images kind of uh, automatically kind of uh, the playing. It's a looping. So we need to have some control using action script. So let's go back. So now, first, once this play head plays, and once it hits frame number ten, here, the first image now has the end of hundred percent alpha value. Then we need to stop here, right here, right. So go to Windows menu, open Code Snippets. HTML5 canvas, timeline navigation, and stop at this frame. Just a double click. Now you can close it. Now you see that A meaning that frame now has an action. Same way, every 10 frame we need to stop. Stop 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So we can repeat the same steps or just to select this current frame, hold down the option and drag it on 20. Same way, on 30, 40, 50, 60, and at the end. Okay, so now then let me test it again, see what happens. It will stop at frame number 10, which is, yes, here, 100% of alpha value of this image. So now only thing left is that we just need to have um, the actions on each button. So when I click third one, go to third image. When I click on the sixth one, go to the sixth images, something like that. So place your, <coughs> excuse me, place your playhead on frame number one. Select your first button, okay, and make sure you have the instance's name, button number one. Okay, so select the first button, go to Windows menu, open Code Snippets, now HTML5, Timeline Navigation, because we are working on the same timeline, and we're going to choose this. Click to go to frame, certain frame number, and play. So in this first one, first button, double click. In this case, okay, so this is just a description. You can delete it. I'm not going to. Just leave it as it is. And then when we click on this button number one, BTN1, that's the instance's name, it will go to and play from frame number one. That's the beginning. So this is done. Now choose the second button. Same thing. Click to go to frame. So in this case, when we click on the frame, uh, the second button, we need to go to and play from frame number 11, frame number 21, 31, 41, 51, and 61. That's what we're going to do. It's a kind of the same routine, really simple. So select your second button, double click on the click to go to frame and play action. Double click, this time 11. You can see that your previous action up here too. Go to play one, button number two, go to frame number 11. Same thing, close this window. Now select your third button, same thing. Double click on the same action, this time go to 21. Now, 1, 11, 21, and 31. Double click. 31. Next. Double click. 41. Oops, no. 
and the next 51 and the last 61 okay I think we are all set let me preview it command and return let me test the movie so now it stops on frame number 10 second let me jump to second image it will stop on frame number 20 be jumping to um, frame number 11 and stop on frame number 20 see next 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 and you can jump to where uh, any frames any images okay so this is a really kind of a simple image gallery using adobe anime cc so that's gonna be it for today uh, i hope this helps and then um please be healthy and stay safe and see you next time thanks for watching bye